Berlin show, did it? They bought them from the guy that bought, I guess, bought it from the Indians. And another damn thing, I'm a fourth cousin to George Washington. So yeah, get me started, and I can tell you a lot of history. And my grandmother, which is her aunt, was told, was told about George Washington coming through there with his with his troops. And he called her, and they had what we about like we make pancakes. They called them Johnny cakes. And she said to my grandmother's aunt, said. Aunt so and so, this is the best Johnny Cates I ever ate. Now George Washington said that. Oh. Hell, I'd tell you more about the history about the whole But in the Mittens, all I can tell you about then, there was a doctor and a lawyer. But my mother was a band wrestler. And the first time that I ever saw a woman smoke a cigarette on a package was advertising cigarettes for the, the name was Van Wrestler. And the kids like to go to school that kid me to death. Because mm -hmm. I see your cousins smoke cigarettes. Can you remember what year that was? What year what? That you saw that the kids teased you about. Oh, Christ, no. How old were you? When oh, I have no idea, lady. I'll be honest with you. Uh, when was when were you born? 1895. 1895. Miles Point, Missouri. Okay. Miles Point, Missouri. And uh, who was your, what was your father's parents' names? Minton. Minton. What, uh, what was your father's name? C.J. Minton. C.J. Minton. If you want to know something, look up on the, there and you see a patent. My dad was an inventor. Oh. Uh, he had, 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 had a patent of a yoke in the car, and, and one of his car yokes hanging there out here on the fence. That's something ain't nobody hardly ever saw with a patent come out of Washington, D.C. Oh? If you want some history. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Calvin J. Minton, Gage, Oklahoma. Stock yokes. That's what they got the cattle in with, the one around the neck. And he was the one invented the stock yokes. Yes, he invented the wagon gate. <laughs> he was an inventor. And what else did he invent? Well, he invented, well, the main one of those, the drill hitch. And it pulled more than one drill. Now, back in them days, they just had with their little short drill, wheat drill, called 10 and 12 holes. Well, he made a, a hitch that pulled from two to three drills all hooked together. And didn't have no wheels on it. He done it with angle iron, braced it with angle iron. And he invented the disc sled, where they list ridges to, to list in the wheat, and list ridges, which is a ridge buster. Hell yeah! And on top of that, he was a buggy maker. He made buggies. When he was younger. He was born in born in Iowa, moved to Missouri. Went to Kansas City and shot horses for the racetracks. <laughs> there it is. You ain't got room your favorite put down the history by right now. Where did your father come from? I went to Missouri. Uh huh. And your mother, where was her folks? Uh, originally, her folks were from Virginia. Uh huh. And she, uh, they come to Missouri. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Oh, this is the time where I was born, what to go miles is point. Mm -hmm. But they had a nickname for it, they called Shanghai. Oh. When we got us down in those Shanghai roosters, you heard of Shanghai roosters? Yes. They said the town was full of Shanghai roosters. In the morning, they woke everybody else, and they just nicknamed them Shanghai. <laughs> well, uh, do you remember your grandparents? Uh, yeah, I remember my grandmother, my grandfather. Uh -oh. But I don't remember my uncle. Uh -huh. You see, uh, city of New York, where New York said, but at least then the rest of it owned it. And I'm not talking about a bond from the Indians, don't get that mixed up, but they didn't buy it from the Indians. 
They're Holland Dutch is what they are. Well, I two of them come over here, and the one that got a hold of the aisle in New York, never did come to the United States. Then I never heard of. But he he was a he, uh, was the owner of the, the New Island of New York. And he leased it for ninety nine years. And when the lease was up, the only way you could take her apart was to go to Holland. You understand? Couldn't get by a lawyer or a darn thing. And my uncle, on my mother's on my mother side, the only one they had, had two, uh, other, had two aunts. He took sick and passed away. Right at the time he was supposed to go to Holland and get the port. So that's when he never got it in. Well, if you don't bring a line of potato by the nursery, all you have to do is go to the inside your figure and look up that nursery. And they'll give you a low down on it. Well, and that was your mother's maiden name. Yeah, Van Nursery. Mm -hmm. um, how long did they live in New York before they left there? Hell, I don't know, girl. You don't remember them telling me. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if my grandmother ever lived in New York, but, I her, see. but, but her people her did. Her people did. See. Yes, I see. No, I don't okay. know. Okay. Uh, well, in the relationship, she was, was uh, my grandmother was a little hell. She, she married, my grandmother was married a very lesson. Mm -hmm. How she got them. Her maiden name was. Oh, I got a friend I can't think of right now. Freeman, goddamn, pardon me if I kind of like it. But her mother, her mother's maiden name was Freeman. Freeman. The Freemans was related to George Washington, you understand? I see. And Pat went to every one of them. To, there was a lake in between that Pat couldn't get. It belonged to the. What is it? They call it Sisters of the Revolution or something? Yes, Daughters of the oh, yeah. One place there, the last time I talked to her, she said, it wasn't making there and she wasn't able to get She get the, got the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, she got When my grandmother passed away, in fact, all, most of history was in, in the obituary, in fact, she got it, see. But there's some link in there she hadn't got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should call the Daughters of the Revolution. Mm -hmm. I was funny, we went to out about the fourth grade. We were sick from, didn't have a time history on Custer. But just a couple of miles down the railroad track, and see the road just run on the railroad tracks in the middle of the day here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And this little girl, I see about six, about seven or eight, you know, something like that. And we were having a history lesson about George, uh, General Custer, and she said, General Custer, with my, my cousin, which had to be about a second cousin, you understand? And I said, Is that right? I said, George Washington is my fourth cousin. She said, I know, I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the truth. She got the little legs. That's the first time I ever mentioned about, you know, what? that's what George Washington was for. According to history, I'm my fourth cousin. Were either one of your grandparents in a war? that you remember? Oh, hell, it is on my father's side. Okay. He was in the, what the hell was it? The Civil War. The Civil War? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went out of Western Kansas and filed on some land where everybody else did, you know, dried out. Do you yeah. remember any stories that he told you no, about the Civil don't. War? No. Yeah. You don't. I never seen him. Oh, you never I saw him? I never saw him, mm -hmm. no. Huh? He's the only one that was in any of the wars of your grandparents. Uh, that's the only one I know of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, where did your father meet your mother? Get acquainted with her? I, don't, well, I don't, don't know. I'm, I'm saying Missouri. Somewhere in Missouri, maybe. Uh, well, there's I know. Mm -hmm. That's the only place she grew up in, but what to go Miles Point. Uh -huh. Do you remember uh, their dead wedding date? Oh, Christ, no. Never even heard it. No, I have no idea. Okay, and then when uh, you were born in... Uh, 1895. What month? 
And don't bash me because I was just, one day in there I'm ashamed of. That's the eighth day of May. That was when I was born. Harry and I were born on the same day. Harry Truman? Yeah. Oh. That's really. That's the reason why you were both so. Um, no, I mean, that's only, only, only that I'm ashamed of. Hell, how would you like to be born on the, you're a Democrat, how would you like to be born on a Republican birthday? <laughs> it wouldn't bother me in the least. Well, I was born on a Democrat's birthday. <laughs> Guy across the street down there from Patch. Uh-huh. Where did you go to school at? Just all the railroad track. Here in Gage? Oh, yeah. How come you folks to come to Gage? My mother had a TV. Uh -huh. They told her to take her to dry country, and they brought her to uh -huh. a dry country. Yeah. And if you need any fruit, just ask everybody that lives here whether it's dry or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we get rain here. Yeah. But it's usually dry. <laughs> yeah, that's how she got the rain. Do you remember your first school teacher? Oh, that. No, I remember some of, some of the first ones. One of the first ones I ever did. Ms. Lee. Mm -hmm. Let's see, then you were what, six years old when you started? Well, I started school at six years old. Well, yeah, eight. Well, I was in Indian Territory in school for seven years. Oh, y yes. Yes, you would be. <laughs> well, this is a Cherokee outlet, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know uh -huh. what it is. Yes. I know it was Indian Territory. Uh -huh. Were there very many Indians around? Yeah, yeah, going through and tried. So I'm with they. They visited from New Mexico and uh, Colorado to the Indians up east of us. <laughs> and they go by in tribes. You know. And I want a little burrow. You know what a little burrow are. And my dad was trying to buy a little burrow for me. And all they get was a, uh, uh, from the Indian. And finally, some guy told me, he said, told my dad, he said, I mean, that's all going on to the Indians and going to the government. They ain't allowed to sell them. Yeah, the Indian for horses and their pony go to the government. They didn't wrong to the So that, that's how I learned to get me a burrow. But they go down there on this first little creek, you know, that's east there, back over there in about, oh, three quarters of a mile of camp. So they go to that camp. And there's one, one tribe going to visit the other during this life. People go in the, in the car about it is somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's all they ain't. Mm -hmm. Did you ever slip down and watch them? Hell, oh, you know, they weren't. They weren't dangerous. I know they weren't dangerous, but they would have different ways of living. They would be cooking out when they. Well, I don't know. I never bothered them. You never they bothered, bothered me. Mm -hmm. No. Do you know what tribes went oh, through? Oh, tribes don't know. You're in pain under the tribes, or nothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, they tell you what they are. Oh, that tribe I ever knew of was the five civilized tribes of Oklahoma. We hadn't learned that in Oklahoma history. Yes. What kind of a house did your folks live in when they first come? The first couple of weeks lived in a day out. Mm hmm Just a cellar. Mm-hmm. Not when we first come. We stayed at the biggest hotel in town. Little hotel sat down there on that corner. Yes. An old doctor and they used to hear so much about it. he was just beginning to come over there and fax and said he'd go back for some medical school. To the little hotel. Yeah, that that was about nineteen that was nineteen hundred. Mm hmm Then that big had to have a place to live on, you know, six months out of the year. Mm -hmm. So he just really Oh, and look out of a dugout. Mm -hmm. Then he built a two room house down there on the corner, which had all gone to hell now, to the back of mine. Mm -hmm. Had a big fence around there, but more down than most houses are, and the trees fell down on that. Mm -hmm. Your father farmed? No, his son Jack farmed. And he got everything he made. And sometimes he made twelve, fifteen dollars. Then he had to go to the army, and my dad sold my room corn crop for thirteen dollars or something. Mm -hmm. Hell, no, I had a farm. Well, uh, did you go through high school here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here in I went to Wichita Business College too. I know that from credit. Mm 
Uh-huh. But the only thing I remember is single entry. I don't know anything about double entry. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. You just missed it. Well, you don't know the fact. I had all the opportunity in the world. My dad was well affixed. Uh -huh. In other words, like I said, I was spoiled with that. I got, my dad wanted me to study to be a doctor or a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But I was too smart to be either one of them. So I didn't be, it turned out to be either one of them. Uh -huh. And that's what he tried to be. And I turned out to be an animal cleaner and fresher and had Worked hats. Mm -hmm. Well, after you graduated, did you graduate from the Wichita Business College? No, well, no, I got up to where you had to go through the bank part of it and quit because I was afraid to go broke in the bank. <laughs> okay, then after that you came back to Gage. Listen, girl, don't get me started. If there's a town west of here, mm -hmm. in California, Oregon, mm -hmm. Dakota, I never went into the Dakotas. But nearly all of them up there. <laughs> and the far east is, oh, Mobile, Alabama. Uh, Iowa, Minnesota. I've been packing all them. Yeah, I, 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 I sold clothes, tailor made suits. Oh, uh huh. And I had her, and a darn good had her, too, because there wasn't any of them left. She said, Yeah, I had to walk underneath the, right in there. Yes. Underneath there, that's one of the hat blocks I had. What companies did you work for? Well, Denton, I made clothes for uh, Denton Wool, Mason and Hanson, Herb Tearing Company, International International Tearing Company. Oh, hell. <laughs> and you, you <laughs> were a traveling salesman for these companies? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I worked for myself. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I worked for Harmon Company out of Denver. Mm -hmm. I made Oregon, Oregon, La Grande, Dallas, Portland, mm -hmm. and all through there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> your dad, uh, your dad then was. Uh, what was he doing while you were traveling? He ran a blacksmith. I damn pardon me, but that well out there with the water running is what broke my dad. Artesian well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about that well. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll last that long. Okay. Mm -hmm. About 1917, Dad and two other fellows organized a co partnership. And they took 40 acres of our farm down there and divided it up in what they call 22 foot drilling lots. You understand? Yes. And they sold you a day, it needed to start. When they first started with ten dollars, and finally I guess they got them up to twelve dollars a bag of for a deed to twenty two foot drilling lots. Mm -hmm. Now get this straight. Okay. And it was held in escrow at the bank. Mm -hmm. And when oil or gas was struck, they surrendered this deed to this twenty two foot drilling lot, took it in an oil store. Mm -hmm. Well, you ever heard of the blue sky board? Yes. All right. The time they got down to about 900 feet, they hit that well out there at 376 feet. The, that that them, them days, they, they didn't know anything about case and all stuff like that, see. Mm -hmm. And before they ever got down, just got down 900 and some feet after they got the water factory case off. Mm -hmm. The blue sky board got them, but they didn't have nothing to sell. You could have something to sell. Mm -hmm. They didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 in other words, by serving his 22 foot drilling lot, didn't get your title to, to, to all their gas and stuff. So it was a bankruptcy. My dad didn't, wasn't even on the payroll. All he got was 50 cents a piece for each one of them lots, 22 foot drilling lots. And they paid him the 50 cents whenever they sold lots, you understand what I mean? Then after that, that went through, he had to start back from blacksmithing. Well. Uh-huh. That's what happened. Before. That was in 1917, you said. Well, that's when it started, 1919, when it hit the water. Yes. Mm -hmm. 1918. And I'm going to go to New Stratton. Those cars was up out like that picture. You don't see them with a very black background. And these there was that water was going out through the top of the, of the tower. Mm-hmm. This rose, rose up there. 
the back of the room, the in my half there. I was about to go to the graduation hospital. They bring a patient in off the field at night, you know, and put them in the hospital. And the next night they go to train, back train up there and pick them up and take them to the base hospital. And I got this here. It took about two months to get here from home. And I don't know what, what they hit the, with this water. But it, it, had to, it had to be along about the 1st of November. Uh, last October. And I got this picture. And I showed it to all the boys. I bet it hit all over the place. Now they look at the head of it, you never heard of these water down in this country, you know, like that. <laughs> well, like whenever you got a letter, you'd read it over two or three times, and I got this picture, looked at it, and turned back over. But that old rope was an indelible pencil. You know about how indelible it showed in the very background. And I got a, got a reading it in 3,000 gallons a minute. But I went broke just in two days. After being well off, you understand? Well, I never told him. <laughs> I, I just told him and got it out. He had to leave the shack. He had been no serious. I said, that damn water cup and mine went broke. That's water. He said, what? And I said, yeah, that's water. And then they thought it was oil all the time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was broke overnight. You just got the same thing. Yeah. After being a wealthy oil man. Well, how long was it before they developed this artesian well to make the uh, oh, yeah. the lots? It's never been developed. It hasn't. It hasn't. It's been packed like you say, stayed out there. They made a swimming pool, and that's all. That could have been the largest one, of the largest attraction in Oklahoma if they took it. And done it. But that's the kind of people you got around there. Look at your town down there now. Hell, right on the tailor shop. Well, Maybe. where does that water go to? It, yeah, it part of the drainage go off toward the, well, go, it seeps down and it seeps under the railroad track, part of it. I all like to fish and I'd walk the river out, you know, mm -hmm. people channel cat, and I got a, I thought a nice little stream was coming out to the bank, so they gave me some good face water, and that down mineral water. I took my hat and down with the ducks, you know, and get me a drink like cow hand It was that darn mineral water. <laughs> I'd never turned up. Oh. It's clear uh, run, underneath the railroad track here, you know. Uh -huh. I got it. I was sure surprised. Uh, I was too hot, you know, how that's been years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but does it run off into the creek? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it did. This kind of seeps out uh -huh. Well, is it still producing the 300? I don't know. Oh, well, I have no idea. Nothing more. Uh -huh. Well, it yeah. looks like it the way it comes up. Yeah. Dad said it throw it up. The case was about that big round. It'd be what? About six inches? I wouldn't have no idea. And it throw the rocks out the size of the casing. Just stripped them off and throw them up the top of the Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it done. Well, the rocks that size. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of force down there. Oh, yeah. The ground. Yeah, that's right. And it has to be a big yeah, river. You know, they, you hear me right about that. They, they, they don't know what I think that they stopped, those five were stopped in the 900 and some feet. But if I remember right, it was 385 or something like that feet when they hit the first first part of the, the water. Uh -huh. In other words, I think the main thing is less, a little less than 400 feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, everybody, you know, everybody knows more than anybody else around there, just like they do. So, no, I would get fish out of this. It's like, what the hell? I'd, Called a Jigging Fish, bass out of that thing. Mm -hmm. Well, but, isn't that supposed to be a very healthful water? Yeah, I'll tell you something that happened. There's a gentleman that lives up in uh, well, there's almost a, well, where that big house is, just before you leave the last house and get it up on the hill there. And the gentleman, I think, is in the hospital now. There's an old gentleman that, that gardening and farm a little bit there. I couldn't wear his shoes. But I told me this. And then that was, when they first hit the water and had that slush pit with the wastewater on it, he'd come in and soak his feet in there. He got where he wear his shoes. 
That was before he'd ever got, you know, he, he heard about how spring he gets to bring up that. Well, what is it in the water? Yeah. The only thing I can remember, I had, I got, had a list of them on one of them, but it seemed like it takes powder, potash to make gunpowder. And, uh, and they sent people out of, well, I had them out there. I'll tell you what kind of advertiser you had. The Santa Fe figured they produced enough water that they used for their engines back there, you know. Mm -hmm. That was when they used mm -hmm. steam engines. What they found out was too much mineral in it. They couldn't use it. And when they heard a potash being in it, they come from Washington, D.C. and tested that because they thought they weren't going to get enough to make gunpowder. Help make gunpowder after the war. Well. But there wasn't enough potash in there for gunpowder. Mm -hmm. Well, we I remember there's five or six people were killed in the mm -hmm. war. But I don't know whether just I don't know why they just throw it out. That's yeah, it's been a flowing now ever since 1918. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And still coming up strong. Well, not like it was. I don't oh, know. Oh. I wouldn't say. No, I never seen it throw any rocks out of Well, I remember a doctor sent my father down here to get some of this water to drink, yeah. and I would bring him down once a week with yeah. his jugs. And we'd go home with a lot of that water. Yeah. Yeah, the two fellows are just Foss brothers. I know they used to drink it all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would have done wade in and go fishing. <laughs> okay. Well, that's three numbers older than I am. Well, no, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after, um, after you say you went broke, what did you do then? Just keep on selling suits and hats? I never did go broke. I, I wouldn't want to tell you my reputation. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I don't care about a bit of Uh-huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> were you in World War One? I? I certainly was. I was on one of the Golden East Front when the war was over. With. Oh, you were? Yes, sir. Where did you go for your boot training? Well, the first place I went to a beautiful town in Kansas, better known as Fort Riley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then I went to a beautiful town they call Camp Grant, Illinois, mm -hmm. which is two miles out of Rockford, 92 miles from Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's where the Brown lived that I knew, 92 miles. Mm -hmm. And this show that's on TV, what's the name of it? The Blue and the Gray? No, that show that run the whole time. Oh. Had a, had a lady on it. It's the only nurse they ever heard of ever show. Hell is on. Oh, mash. Mash? Mash. I'm going to tell you something. Now, this is actually the fact. Okay. The guy that owned Mash, commanding officer, was telling about being at Camp Grand, Illinois. He said, We always went to Chicago. Same time, pardon me, the same thing that I done. It's Camp Grand. <laughs> and he's telling about being on during the First World War. <laughs> well, I'm like, I got to think about that, see. Well, he went over to that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, did he tell it right? Outside of being there, hell, he, he went, he'd be too, I'm, I was the young, one of the only foot in the outfit, and I'm 90, yeah. and he's right there. Yeah, I know, but he wasn't, he did not. He went over to that, you know. know. And they had to talk to somebody that did, and he said, they didn't, just, and hell, well, I think he said 92 miles from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go to Chicago when you were there? Yeah, I mm -hmm. And I had a girl that used to come down to see me from Chicago. Oh, well, nice. I had a picture of her sitting on a on cannon one time. <laughs> 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 and I don't know where I ever went the rest of my lifetime. <laughs> well, what, uh, what were you training for? I wasn't training until I was in the medics. Oh, you were in the medics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he came first. <laughs> Take care of the wounded. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And the sick. Of and <laughs> yes. The only had what we used to call a little bed pan tree. <laughs> used to call what? A little bed pan tree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go after you left uh, that camp? Oh, I landed in Brest, France. Oh, you did? 
now. Go that towards the front and check the flow. We say that the Mons, that's where they have the car races. Mm -hmm. I got a 105 fever. Oh my. Sleeping in a pup tent. Mm -hmm. Finally got moved to the hospital. And I went and they oh, can't grant me. I've had to be in the officer's ward taking my training. And there's two, three nurses working in the officer's ward in every place else. And the canteen wasn't oh, like a block from there. And I'd go down and get ice cream. You'd eat ice cream and, you know, in the diet kitchen and so forth. And these, a couple of these girls said, they let it left oh, every three weeks before I did. And one of them said, Jack, we might see each other over there. And I said, there ain't a chance in the world. Oh, how could I see you not losing two good looking girls like you are and get over there and expect to ever see you again? Or oh, I'd have a flu. Uh, you were with the medics all yeah. during the war. Yeah, back in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Were your hospital up at the front? Oh, yeah, not in the front. Not no, not I mean, in. but just behind well, the lines. Oh, no, they all are going to use Trump. Mm -hmm. Are going to use River and are going to Forest, is what yes. that means. Uh -huh. Well, and uh, your hospital then would be where they'd bring the wounded and. Yeah, off the field. Off the field. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you were kept busy, weren't you? Yeah, I was busy. This not that how busy I was. I don't let it down. You see, I was in the flu. Mm -hmm. and when I got when I got up there, everybody had their own job. So they can give me that hardest job they think was counting patients. Every morning I had to get up and go down to the hospital and count the patients. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. That could wore me out the time I got down to there, you know. About how many would you have <laughs> in your hospital? Well, I was, do you remember? No, I don't have no idea. But I did have to remember one guy. I, I, I try to wake up dead people. They don't wake up. Probably. So I shake him up and everybody's buddy, you know, and I wake him up and say, Buddy, buddy, you want something to eat? And I, one morning I shook the guy and he said, Where do you get that buddy stuff? He said, I'm a lieutenant from New York State. Then I went back and got either the lieutenant from New York State. And I said, I don't give a so and so where you're from. But I'm going to put you next to something. Your rank ceased and you got in that, walk, you got in that door there. <laughs> he's uh, treated like the rest of them. Yeah, he, he didn't mm -hmm. know that. The reason they've done that is keep it from so often getting in there and say, hey, come here, see? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see him. See, he had his breakfast. And do not didn't take him down there and pass him all up. And finally, he hollered at him and said, Say, you know, right here's something to eat? And I said, yes, if you find out you're in the hospital. So I went back to the kitchen, down the cuisine, they call them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> down something to eat. But I told him, I learned him something. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to wait till he got to the base hospital to find out he didn't break out the rank anyway. Did they ever bring any of the wounded German soldiers to you? Yeah, and I had a friend named Bob Breeder that was German. You see, I was company Taylor what I was. But when, <laughs> when they organized the company, mm -hmm. the Camp Grant, they allowed so many non-coms, you know, commission officers, mm -hmm. corporals and sergeants. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, they didn't, which, uh, which uh, in other words, the uh, company Taylor covers other non-coms, mm -hmm. the so they had them, pardon me for the language, but had them coach fellows that went knee length overcoat. Well, some of them were overcoats and go play around with their ankles, you know. So they, <laughs> they said, uh, the passage from Brander called the formation of the end of the morning or night, the other retreat, I remember which one it was. And they hired for. Oh, Taylor stepped one face forward. Nobody stepped out. <laughs> so the next formation, they hollered, Brian Clinton. I said, yo. And they said, one face forward. I did. said, when you in formation? It was like the other retreat. I don't know which one. I said, yes, there was. I said, why did you step out when we called for Taylor? 
I said, I'm no tailor, I'm a soldier, sir. <laughs> he said, you're a so-and-so, I'm a soldier. <laughs> and I think it's right for that, we go down the street, play across the street. Then you have out the board of the road, you know, 200 somewhere in the place of it. He said, now there goes a soldier, though. <laughs> I had a lot of fun on the other side of the trouble with it. Yeah, I never saw a stranger in my life growing up. I, I, see, I had to hustle for a living. Well, I took, I never been taken over the old hell. I had a dead mother looked after me and took care of me and bawled me out and spanked me and everything else, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, we tell telling my dad, he had all them damn stores over there. I don't think he get ready to sell a buggy, I guess I did, wagon, but hell, he sold it. All the way from Ashland to Can Candace to Cheyenne, Wyoming. That was just trade territory, you know, clear across. Mm -hmm. uh, if I catch him this right, I'd get more than a penny. He'd be trying to sell something. I'd walk up and down and give him a penny. He'd say, now you got no penny. Give me a nickel. Daddy, now you got no nickel. Dad, give me a nickel. If you get rid of me, I'd buy a pound of spoil a $100 sale. Whatever you had in these parties, get that and give it to me. <laughs> that was that bad. Because I had guys tell me that I grew up. said, if didn't bring out a spank, you do, you couldn't sit down. What I do to my dad, see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go back to uh, Germany there. Um, when you. Oh, I'm in Germany. I was in France. Oh, you're in France, I mean. Um, how long were you over there? I, I believe 11 months and so. Uh huh. You were there until the war ended. Yeah, and I was there five or six. See, the war didn't last long as the war soldiers got over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was there for, well, hell, must have been six months after the war was over. Mm -hmm. What did you do at that time? I was in the tailor shop. Don't need to put that in there. I was a new tailor in a base hospital. At Bordeaux, France. That's your beautiful France where they make Bordeaux wine. Mm -hmm. The damn sour, you can't drink part of it. No less stuff. Uh, <laughs> now, was this connected with the army? <laughs> yeah. this no, the wine wasn't, but I was. <laughs> well, I mean your shop. Uh, your shop. Yeah. It was connected. What'd you do? Uh, I was company tailor. Mm -hmm. I sold chevrons on. Uh -huh. I cut the rookie out of a darn tail of coat. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. We had to argue about the uniform and never on a human being. Well, yes, I can agree with that. You can satisfy. Uh -huh. And you were there. Down in jackets was like the lady tea jackets they used to make when I was a kid, didn't wear out over their hips like that. Mm -hmm. That's where the bottom was. The bottom was the garden coats. Mm -hmm. And I repegged the pants. They just come out straight and they come up and peg. Make them a little more like the riding trousers. See. Did you uh, did you get paid for doing this? I got everything I could snatch. Get well, paid. the soldier boy. I won't tell you what then. Mm -hmm. When we come off the front, we was back France, that southern part of France for a while. Then we went to Bordeaux, mm -hmm. France, which was out, out on the, what they call Beau Desert. Mm -hmm. Which means beautiful desert. And hell, it was a beautiful desert. It hadn't been for all those soldiers out there. Mm -hmm. Well, then, they had a tailor shop out there, but the company would leave. You can't get along with that in tailor shop. In fact, the other day, someone from there said, Well, they got a lot of ladies in there now. Like the hell, they had that a real woman before she saw a pair of pants or something, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, so the, uh, the man in the order was coming over and told me, Jackson, the guy's going to leave you. They were employees. That was another outfit, I understand. Mm -hmm. So I went and bought a, he had a retailing machine and some irons and a few darn needles and stuff like that. That's about all it was. Mm -hmm. I had a charcoal iron. You ever see charcoal iron? Mm -hmm. I've a, seen them. I had one of them. Somebody stole it. And uh, so I bought it, and I said, well, told the Jackson, that's the commander, I said, now this is what the deal is on this. You want me to get all this money to officers, miss? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no. Got him proud of him, and then the guy working there. He said, 
get two more, get them twenty dollars a month, and then get twenty dollars a nest on. I said, "Oh, there's a nest." He didn't say. Then I kept the rest. Mm-hmm. So I cost me, cost me sixty dollars on a tail or something. Mm-hmm. But hell, you got there's a rookie out of tail. We got three dollars, you know. Mm-hmm. Three pegs, and we got. Let's see. I forgot what it was. Rookie out of tail. Of like five or six dollars. Mm-hmm. We had the crappiest looking uniform that anybody ever saw. I don't kid you. Mm-hmm. You made them look nice. Best dress company in now, AEF. Well, that's what everybody said. But they're mm-hmm. there when I'm, and the darn collars, the darn old narrow collars got an inch high, hardly. You think a guy had a long neck? Look how they look like. <laughs> so I took, I took him, you know, over the tailor shop. On the road, the road of the tailor shop was on the inside of a tin building, carpenter shop, and there's a tarpaulin. Big old heavy tarp, laid up on top. I take the tailor shears and get up there and cut the big strips of that, that's a pole, you know. You know what I mean with that tarp. Put about three or four or three layers together, then put them like that, zigzag them back and forth like that, see so they stand up. Then take and cover them, and had two, some of them was a long neck, I put two little hooks and eyes on, not snapped like that. So, hell, it looked like it. He looked like a tailor made. Yeah, I, was, I had it pretty easy. Just on kind of having the flu and caught him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You never did get shot at then? No, I got half shot. Not that. Mm-hmm. Everybody else did over there. <laughs> uh, when did you uh, come home then? Do you remember? Oh, no, I think it was. I believe it is. I believe it is for the Fourth of July. Then the last of June. Now what you say? Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Eighteen? Nineteen? 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 Do you remember the name of the ship that you came on? No, I don't. Because I tell you why. One of them was the Great Northern and the Northern Pacific. You went over on one and. Uh, and the, uh, and I went over on the Northern the Northern Pacific, I don't remember. And you know the big ship you heard and talk about the Leviathan? Yes. Well, I was, it wasn't Leviathan I went over on, but it was another. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether it was Northern Pacific, Southern Pacific, or what. Did you have a good trip coming yeah. across? Oh, yeah, I was only sick, but. You know, I, I, you talk about going across or coming across? Both. Going you, across. Yeah, I had a nice going across. I didn't remember a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Seven days going across, and I was just six days sick. <laughs> going across. Yeah, you don't talk to me about that, then. What about the. Well, you, coming back, I, I, I said just a few minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the sailors come to me and said, I said, hell, I, I met this sailor. I said, I got out and get sick. He said, come go. So he took me down to the butcher shop and gave me some raw hamburger. And it's kind of settled this down. Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had trip. a nice trip coming home. Uh, the weather was nice. No, nice trip on the ocean. I was glad to come home all right. Mm-hmm. I tried to get discharged over there. Mm-hmm. But they went to Africa and didn't have any relations. Mm-hmm. Not had any revenue over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I want to do? What? Sell souvenirs. Oh. Hell, these guys over there, that, I mean, hundreds of guys that sent across this as artists of sign, you know, on the trip, see? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he sells some of the souvenirs. And I went to see where he said, you got any relatives here? I said, none that I know of right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can't get this shit out. Mm-hmm. No, I like to get this out of But they wouldn't, mm-hmm. they wouldn't give you your papers over no. there. Okay, and then when you got home, what next? I bought me a dealer D45 dealer. I bought this house here. And, and I finally got married and had to send them dirt to buy the, the furniture I had in this house. And the bedroom set and all was down in the old tailor shop building. Well. <laughs> and I had, 
I had more than a dollar bill than I mean, you ever saw in four tailor and a half. Mm-hmm. Well? I'll show you the biggest rock you ever see some poor girl wear here. Yeah, you showed me that. Tell me about the story of that ring. Well, the whole story about that ring, I was going by Dax France. That's over in the southern part of France. You can see the deer naked from there. The officers hadn't got paid. And we had. The next minute. And I was going by the jewelry store. And I had a that old photo car. And I knew all the officers, you know, when they were out there. So I went in the jewelry store and asked us to look into one of these. Uh, there was all majors out there in one of them. One of these majors said, Ben, come here, I want to show you something. I went over and said, Why don't you buy that? And I said, Well, I don't want to know what I want for it. He told me. I said, I don't believe I got that many francs. And why don't you buy it? He said, we ain't got paid yet. And I had a leather belt on with two pockets and one in the back for the money. Well, so I had a 50, 20 American money out of But I like some of them having enough rich. So that's the little girl in the jewelry store, how much it was, she told me. And I said, there's so many hundred francs, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I bought the ring. And coming back across, this same guy offered me a hundred dollars for it. You know, more than what I get for it. Yeah, offered me a hundred dollars. I bought it in a lady's ring. I bought it from a wire. Mm-hmm. From a girl. What is it, a full carry? It's oh, it got too much. It's a carrot in 23 100s. Oh, it is. It likes it. likes to, two 100s being a carrot in a four. Yes. Well, it's a beautiful ring. I tell you. Now, then we all kill each other. Now, I got the old guy that this well back that talked about the ring. I said I'd take that ring when I was younger and get more than you can from the Cadillac. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you good? No, no kidding about that. <laughs> I was at the cross the street where the bank is, and the nun working the bank down there. He said he saw that ring of mine. I went in the bank. He said, I don't see your ring, Jack. And I showed him. He said I saw that flash across the field, right across there. Sun hit it just right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a little girl, France, that I already used to wear it on my little finger. She's a teenager, 17, 18 years old. And about every other place, a little wine joint, you know, have their tables all set right on, on, out on the streets, you know. There was no flies in France. Oh, there is? Oh, crap, no, there's no flies. And instead of opening up a door like we in here, they opened up the whole side of the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a little girl, she, I let her wear it. She wears school, school. And she brings, they don't give a train little French girl and American girl. Not one bit. Only you don't, want to, you don't understand their language. I know they say that it, 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 the first thing you learn is say yes. Oh, we, if I do. Oh, yes. We mean yes. And if I say, if I really talk to somebody and say, huh? huh? You know, when you talk about this and huh? But you don't understand what they're talking about, huh? So, whatever you say, yes, yes. And I don't know what all they said to me, and I say, oh, we, and they just laughed to beat the devil. I don't know what they said to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> but this little teenager, she went to school, she back. She's a very popular little girl. There's always two or three little girls with her. And she'd come in and I'd be sitting there, not all the time, but every once in a while. And she says, Who's wrong at all? Got me still say. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other girl would show him the judge of the ring I gave her. <laughs> so she was cute, darn little devil. <laughs>
Okay, you came home and you set up a tailor shop here in Gage. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I wish you would uh, go down the street on the beginning at the south end of Maine. And let's go on the west side, and can you tell me each business house on the Bank west side? Hospital. You couldn't do well, that. Well, I've been going 35 years or so. Uh -huh. I can tell you, about back in the early days. Well, that's what I want. Well, when we first come here on the store there, when the store was what they call Massey's store. But it was a frame building. Uh huh. Now that was on the west side of Maine. No, no, but up on the west side of Maine, the first uh, was a store on the corner. It was a drugstore. Yeah. And I'm really this is what I can remember was surely the surest drugstore. Mm hmm I know that was during my school age because I had boys in my class named Mary Shirley. Mm -hmm. And what was next to it? All right. We'll try to get it. Jackson, that's going to take me a little time. I don't know what it is. That's fine. But it, 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 it's a restaurant. And it was run by a widow lady. So, let's see. I know her granddaughter, but I can't remember her. But anyhow, next to that was this restaurant. Uh, little we call it the restaurant rooming house. Mm -hmm. and the next place was the bank. But this is the way the back end. They might have to see. And the next place the next to Back was a little store at Madison Sports. No, it was a straight haberdashery, but it was a clothing store and so forth. And there's a Maxi real estate office, and there's a barber shop. And then went by the first store. Next place is Living Cots is an old timer's mm -hmm. in the hardware store. And then on the corner of there, right across the filling station, was Bank of Gage. See, I saw three banks go broke here. I mean, two of them. Was, one of them I got saved. I, I saw them on the clothes. And I'd have them send the full amount of money with the suit. I'd send the pot, like five and ten dollars, and have a couple of COD. So I went to the North Bay to run this post office on that. Yeah, post office on that side of the train, on the west side, too. North Bay had run that and had a little girl working for him named Roma. And, and George Baker she said, I don't know. You know, Jackie shouldn't carry so much money. He said, I see it. I said, well, you won't take a check, so I've got to have something with this, this, this COD. So he said, I'll see the banker. So the banker told him, I thought he'd say I'd give him my checks. So he goes, the next time I went to get a COD, he said, to take the check. Well, I don't know if I gave him the check, but I had given him the checks. So I went down there and bought this. Working women, I went to get a COD and said, Jack, you can't take the check anymore. I said, I thank you. I'm glad you can't. But I was good enough for to get a COD. And I went back and brought all the money out, and I think $30 something. Bryce Reagan was living here live here today. And he was trying to have dinner shop. Well, I cross them the damn day. Where the fire station is now. You know where the fire station is? <laughs> on the east side. Mm -hmm. I had to have a shot over there. So 
on Friday, right? He said, I see the parish closed. I said, yeah, they close every night, right? He said, no, I mean, it's closed. And I said, that's right, what you got to draw my money on. And Iron Nickel out here, come by, about the same day that I brought my money out, Biden, on the if I had the money, I said, I had some. He said, well, you catch my check for $50? I said, sure. So I gave him a cashy check for 50 that's the morning of the day or two of the, Oh, I went to the bank the next morning in case I already checked, got the money on. The day two after, they brought the bank closed and brought the check over me to take out. And I said, what? They said, that check is a hell of a while. I don't want to take it. You got it. You're the last one to have it. <laughs> what you do? They said, you're picking the hole. And I said, you go back and find that pigeon and find out where that hole is and put it back in there. And for the goal of it, Guy worked for the man, he come over and asked me if I owed his check, you know, for five billion dollars. <laughs> I was back to old man, see. <laughs> so I went through that back twice. Was that in twenty nine when I don't the, have no idea. The when way. there was the all the banks closed in nineteen twenty nine. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know what uh -huh. I sure wouldn't. Uh-huh. Well, um what about uh, the um, dirt storms? I don't know. Were you here in the 30s? Yeah. You remember the dirt storms? It didn't bother me. Didn't bother you? No. Uh, what I about? Drove a, I drove to New Orleans, moved here, 47, 29, 30, 31, New Orleans. I don't know the budget depression. Uh -huh. I worked, I hustled for a time. Yes. I didn't say I can't do this, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I had some things I didn't do as well as I did others. Mm -hmm. Uh, then when everybody else was uh, having a hard time in the depression. That's the time to make money. It's it is. Always remember, trying to make money when it's tough on everybody else. Since everybody had plenty of money, I've been pretty broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, the Dirty Sunday, the Black Sunday? I walked up there on this porch and couldn't see my hand. Mm -hmm. I heard about it. Not being able to figure out his hand in front of me. And I sat before that porch and I actually done this. I took my hand out to see if I could see it, but I couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. That was funny that he comes up here, oh, you couldn't see your hand before you. And I got I couldn't, right here on the porch. Did and you I, did you see the cloud coming in? I guess I did. I think I was downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he let us somebody told me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about being able to see your hand before you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sure went through that part. What about World War Two? I don't know anything about it. I don't know about it. I got a son-in-law that done 31 years in World War Two. Uh, he's a full colonel. He got the cancer. And don't tell me how long it is. That's what I think about your World War Two. You didn't have to go. You were too old to go. I wouldn't have worried if I'd been too young to win. I'm not very patriotic when I have to be. Oh. <laughs> I only wanted to learn to fly. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. You want to learn to fly. You put four missions or even a team. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the son in law? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you the fourth thing has to. I think you're going to be just now, sir. Now that's where I've got to stay at night in the wintertime. Where is this? Shreveport. Shreveport. That's where you go to spend your winters? Yeah. Well, that's nice that you can go to Florida and spend your money. Uh, Louisiana, oh, Louisiana, I mean. <laughs> I'd be able to give them a home like I got and have to live in a place like that. Isn't that awful? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Looks nice to me. Yeah. Okay, then you. Uh, what did you do during World War II? Did you do any work 
in the war effort? No, I sure did. I worked for bird dogs, I think. Mm -hmm. And how about another thing? Sold clothes, had a camel dog camel. Mm -hmm. Went fishing, went hunting. Mm -hmm. Now I can't do none of it. Well, you're in pretty good health, aren't you? I don't hurt no place, but I'm weak. I can't walk. I see. I walk right. from here. Cross the street twice and I'm all in. Mm -hmm. Only thing that keeps me alive is lying all the time. Uh, tell me about your family. How many children did you have? I had one. I wasn't going to children. I called her a brat. I raised a brat. Oh, you did? That's the one that goes. I go stay with her all the time. Uh huh. Her name was Pat. Uh -huh. She used to come there. A paper dog. You said, down her. How the devil she gonna spell? T A T A T A T Y T A T T I E T A T T E. <laughs> That's a fact. Mm -hmm. I, I know a half a dozen ways you spell Patty, you know. Yeah. It helps you even now, you Yeah. Well, can you think of anything else to tell me about your war work or your early day life, your parents? No, I don't think about my father. Just like I think I told you about the story he had. Ed Barrett. Well, Ed Barrett, there's one. Of, when we first come there, most of us always was on the side, north side of the track over there. People over there were coal running. Then around 1902, about 1903, people were there with cars running. And right on this corner, here we are. The old garage and stuff is on the corner, just before you cross the railroad tracks. And the two-story building there is on this part. It's on, the, on, the, on this side of the track, see now. There's a beauty store and a bakery next to that. And a, and a, and a gauge paper, which was run by a lady. By the name of Hawkins. Maud Hawkins had one of the first newspapers in here. And then, next was the L. Young store. It was a big store built up about like that. And the next place, the start with was a was a feed store. And the next place was my dad. Implement the hardware store. And there's petitioning out in between that about like that. Between my dad's store and the hardware store. And I'm another kid with down with Crip Station, come got the buggy to ride down with a guy and he pulled out his plug of chewing the backer and said, You want to chew and we took a chew. Well I kept mine in my mouth till I got the dad store and I went over there and sat down between them two buildings and everything came up with my socks. And dad came out and said, what's the matter, son? And I said, I'm sick. He said, I told you to stay out of that sun. Well, he didn't know I got sick on Julie Packer. <laughs> <laughs> well, next to my dad's store, dad and I bought that from the NRG store. So starting there, Dad's store, next to my dad's, that's on this side of the track. Yes. Next place was my dad's bicycle uh, shop and machine shop. Mm -hmm. and the next place was a horseshoeing shop. They didn't even know to shot horses. And the next, now this is old one. The next one was Von Fort, saddle shop. Von Fort now. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how long a lot of people live there, but Mon Fort run that saddle shop because we was about six, seven years old, coming from school. And every kid back in them days wanted the saddle. Hell, didn't like a kid now wants bicycles. Mm -hmm. We stopped and admire them saddles, you know. Mon Fort run the saddle shop right where Ed Bear shut his home. Because mm -hmm. he's improved it, but that's what it was, a saddle mm -hmm. shop. Then across from my dad, 
fell back nicely shot straight across with all uh, them trees along the railroad. They had coal shoots. What they call coal shoots. Bids of coal, you know, but they, they're coal. And, uh, and the scales across there. In other words, outside of one place, he owned a block in there. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have uh, cowboys come to town? Well, there were none here but cowboys. There wasn't none but cowboys when we came here. Nothing but cowboys? Yeah. What kind of men were they? Some of them was rounders and some of them wasn't. Some of them was pretty nice, huh? Well, there's all of them just like that. If you want to find the Cummings part of the town, seven gauge Oklahoma. About, two, about a year ago when I come back here. No principal about none of them to speak of. Hell, I, I never saw a stranger in my life, you understand? Mm, yes. Why the hell over there? Mm -hmm. Hell, he's working with anything around the well, hell. One guy said to me, he said, I said, hi there. And he said, what are you saying? I said, ain't you used to people speaking to you? That was two years ago. Well, I, know I say that a piece in the, the American magazine where, what was that writer's name that died? That was, uh, oh, Christ. Well, Whitey Post? Yes. I'm sure we got it. I'm going to step on that. Okay. Probably wish I had the horse over there. <laughs> You do a lot of reading, don't you? No, I don't. You don't? I sure don't. I used to watch television like to rent my eyes. I know you're not wearing glasses. Your eyes must be pretty good. Well, she For your man. I seen everything that worth seeing when I was young, and after I got old, I didn't have to use my eyes anymore. Oh, and you saved your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? Oh, Ernie Piles. I think it's one of these here. Mm-hmm. Ernie Pyle. Read one of them. Sorry, I'm there. Read this one here. I think that's it. From St. Petersburg sidewalks, is that no, one? No, what's the next one down there? Oklahoma is one that's of That's it, go ahead and read it. Read that. Oklahoma is one of the friendliest states in the Union. Taxi drivers open the front door so you can ride up front. If there's just one passenger, he always rides with the driver and they talk. Oklahoma City is an especially <laughs> friendly <laughs> town. Good. People there have a pride about their town, not a silly civic pride, but that same feeling that exists in San Francisco and New Orleans. They just wouldn't live anywhere else, that's all. I too like Oklahoma City, but I had a little bone to pick with it. In no other place had I ever seen the absolute wall of billboards <laughs> that you got coming into Oklahoma City from the West. I could hardly believe my eyes. After you looked a while, it really got comical. In the last 10 minutes, I'll bet there were 2,000 billboards. <laughs> that's what I wanted to see. And that's Ernie Pyle's that's Ernie Pyle. home country, written in the American Legion uh, magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and the day I live here now. He changed his idea. I guarantee you that. Uh huh. This is uh, September 1985. I'm not kidding you. I've written two oil companies. I'm Gusta Dillery and Tawana. 
same darn class of people in the whole world. Takes charge. Mm -hmm. They don't give a darn for nobody. With yourselves, a lot of them don't care anything about yourselves. Uh, did you know Dr. Kerr? Say, don't talk Dr. Kerr to me. Don't talk Dr. Kerr? You don't know about Dr. Kerr? Yes. Yeah, turn that thing on and I'll tell it to you. Well, what were some of the other doctors in town? Dr. Irvin is the best doctor we ever had. Mm -hmm. Dr. Irvin. When he was at the hotel, when he was just practicing, I had a little BB gun. And it went off and put a BB shell shot right up above my eye. In my uh, I asked him. That's how much it missed my eye. And Dr. Irvin picked, picked it out. And we're back in 1900. <laughs> well, who shot it? Who shot the BB? Guy by the name of Jack Minton. Oh, you shot yourself? Yeah. I broke the handle on it. You know, the handle. Uh, and the metal come back off the handle, and I had it down like this on the porch, trying to cock it. You see. Mm -hmm. The handle broke off. The, off the, uh, Did you have saloons here in Gage in the early day? Honey, that is something. During the Indian Territory days, they had saloons. Now I'll give you something that you'll enjoy very much. You remember Carry Nation? Mm -hmm. All right. Carrie Nations would have a tearing up all the saloons. She could get her little hats on. Because mm -hmm. I remember them showing them these little hats. You come in the goose. That, that first building, two, only two story building on Main Street, brick is falling down. There was a, a fellow around that saloon. The name is Furch, well, Furch, a good looking guy, dressed as a guy. That is for guy hand days, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Old Carrie came in there with a little hashing. But I know this to be a fact, you see, I'm living here. Yes. Come in there with a little hashing and said, Give me the best drink you got in the house. You used to over and draw her a glass of water and hand it to her. She drank it and walked on out and never even touched the snow. <laughs> and that's the building sitting right down there. Mm -hmm. Every other store she went to, she cracked up about that damn hat. That was scary nation. You have you seen her? I, uh, Personally? I wouldn't say whether that did or not. I was on the street all the time. I probably did, didn't even know it though. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but she had a big the farm down there was sealing her vice or somewhere down there. Wasn't yes. Then she had lived up in Kansas quite a while. Mm -hmm. But I was here when she'd come, when they told her about her coming in the first, first, yeah, called the first saloon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You give her a drink of water, the best you had in the house. <laughs> well, he was smart, wasn't he? He wasn't always smart, he was a good looking guy. Then there's a family of buyers, you know, in nature. There's a bunch of them. They don't want to have the ranch open or even a gate on stuff down there. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he was the first married one of the buyers girls. And then another old timer here named Charlie Green. <laughs> well, it's funny, they said Charlie Green out, Green out of Chicago. His folks are manufacturers or something, you know. Get him away from the environment. When he got here, he always saw the environment he got in. <laughs> That's a fact. I got it. <laughs> what did he do then when he got here? Well, he played poker and got drunk. Oh, he did. Kind of thing. So he, he wasn't different environments for him. They did the same to different people, see? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, they had poker games here. Mm -hmm. I know what got killed. I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. 
Did you have a big, strong jailhouse? Hell, I don't know. I never made it here. Well? Well, they had a jailhouse. Hell, the damn jailhouse wasn't me. Oh, by the way, it's from here that wall and down like that. That's all they ever had. Mm -hmm. There wasn't no criminals here. They was cowboys. You didn't need a jailhouse then? No. Exactly. Everybody got settled as when they need a jailhouse once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look uh, can you name the um, the ranches for me around Gage when you first, when your folks first came here? No, there wasn't no big ranches. I there weren't any big ranches. The biggest ranches down on on the river down there. But I can tell you something else what happened here. Okay. Dad lived come over in eastern Oklahoma first, not too far from Pine Creek. Mm -hmm. Well, he's talking to someone by the name of Tom Morris, which was what you call locators. Locators back in them days locate you for $25. In other words, they didn't know a piece of land that was in file on. So Dad was telling him about one piece of land across the town because he had a wretch and they lived them in the wretchness shop, you see. Mm -hmm. So they Tom said he had a place, he'd tell him where it was. And in other words, Tom Morris's folks lived over there by this little town out of the middle of her, where Dad had come from. And uh, he said, now, you go down, well, you had to go to Woodard to file. Mm -hmm. He said, now, they'll take that piece of land, it had to, to a three wire fence on it at the time. So you, they'll tell you it's already filed on with you. Tom Stone and the dad said, it's not. The cow men got smuggled so they could hold their cattle and time the ship. You know, they drive men off these tracks. Dad went down there and filed on They said, it's filed on them. They said, it's filed on them. Dad said, no, it ain't. Yes, it did. He said, he's got two or three wires around him. Dad said, I know it. There's not filed on them. I want to see the book. Books or paper, whatever it was. Finally, this guy gave up and showed his dad and had five on it. But the, that was after everybody had filed within five or six miles of the gates. And he filed on that piece east of town there. But the cows had it, cowmen had it smuggled, they call it, see? Mm -hmm. That's how he got to be that close to town. See? Yes. Can you think of anything else? Lord. What about you, Pauline? Can you think of anything? No. Main thing is that people know that the south part of town was the main part of town. Up to 1910, they let Tamar and my dad do. Mm -hmm. That was the day of the windmills. There's a windmill sets right across there about, what, about midway of the post office in the corner out the middle of the street. Oh, that's where your water that's, supply was. That's where one of them was. I see. The other one's right straight across, went down from Ed Barracks there, about the middle of that block, in the case of McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And Dad gave them that windmill, and he had his business on this side of the track. Mm -hmm. And I said to Dad, what do you do that for you? He said, I know the towns are going that way. Mm -hmm. You know, he did not do it. That sold out in 1909, so you see. Mm -hmm. But he sold out to A.D. Collar. He sold out to A.D. Collar. I don't know what he got for it, but anyhow, A.D. Collar paid him $10,000 down in cash. You know what I mean? Nothing said but cash. Dad had the guy named Oscar Wall working for him. And Oscar stayed at Dad Stewart night. He said, look, look, I, if you keep up money at this store, I'm not going to stay all night. And Dad said, there ain't no place to put it. The bank ain't open. So they took, back in them days, they had big deal cags, you know. And they dug out their deal cags and put that money down in the, in the nails. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but the old officer said, everybody come back if they can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody came after it. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's my team time. And uh, most of the business was from the railroad south at that time in 1911. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the post office there. Yes. Back in then. But in 1900, three, two or three, the post office was on the other side of the track mm -hmm. when we first got here. Mm -hmm. The people by the name of and I remember when the brick got built that brick, I don't remember, I was about six, seven years old. And after you get down that ground, there's old red mud, you know, so, and they dug a well there. Because I was playing on that well, and I slipped and fell. Got dirty as a devil. <laughs> Went home. <laughs> but I don't remember what year that was. Mm -hmm. And now it's it's north of the railroad track. The businesses are. There ain't no business north of the railroad track. Oh, there isn't. I mean, the only thing north of the railroad track is that store, which ain't doing any business. Next thing I know is about the bank. Mm -hmm. Well, then there's a beer joint, and it's doing business. <laughs> then the, then the, another guy there that got, well, I don't know what he does, sells some stuff, repairs furniture or something like that. Then the, then the, the filling station. And that's all? And then down on the filling, down on the corner down there, is where they chop the meat up. So mm -hmm. and, and nothing over there at all in that block. What about old building with that butt? Well, the machine shop and all broke down. Mm -hmm. But they got wired up in front. Was the railroad here when your father came? Oh, Christ, yes. That's the murder. I seen him chain steel on that thing three times myself. Mm -hmm. It was this little old narrow street, about like a Harrow Street car track. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, Santa Fe was one of the best. Cordless. Cord mm -hmm. Hoyle's best, one of the best roads in the country now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen Chain Style three times myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. Boy, yeah. yeah, there's been quite a change in the railroad system. Oh, my God. Hell, how many have done that now? At now that track was. Mm -hmm. Be about what? Two inches? Three? Mm -hmm. Oh, hell, about two. You just try to walk it. You know, from a hole down there. For a quarter of a mile up the depot without falling off. Mm -hmm. Never did get it done. On that little narrow one, find out you got a little wider. You got where the ground. You <laughs> could. <laughs> walk the railroad track without falling off. Mm -hmm. I had advantage a lot of kids. We had a heavy, back in them days, they had the heavy snows. But always had a train to buy and open up the road from it. And that old guy's railroad track. Didn't have them old big rocks on them days, you know. It was just dirt filled, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I've been told there was quite an Indian uh, a battle north, I mean, um, west and north of Gage. Do you know anything about that yeah. battle? I went over there, I tried to find some arrowheads and never found a door in one of them. You want to know what the name of it is? Uh -uh. You don't want to know, I won't tell you. Okay, tell me. <laughs> battle Mound. Battle Mound. Yeah. Is that where the battle took That's place? That's where the big battle was supposed to take place. Uh huh. And it was between two tribes, Indian tribes. I don't know who they were. Uh huh. I was full of these every year. I see. Mm -hmm. The only thing I know is coming just south, north, north of my side of seating. There's a settlement. He was eating it, Asian or something. And he got, you know, trying to stop all the wars. He got his leg shot off. And a little Indian girl. He was out of Fort, oh, well, you know, over here. Fort Supply? 
board supply. They call it camp supply back in them days. Mm -hmm. And he got his leg shot off. And then he had an Indian group that came up and took care of him. Now this is according to the story that was told. Mm -hmm. And they got married. But he still held his job as in the agent. It's over somewhere down the south here in Oklahoma. He went over there to start a little uprising and he went over and tried to corral it. And they just had these great big old soup kettles that they fried. Now, I knew two of his, two of his boys. I mean, this guy did. I know them. They were great big guys. They held must have been close to seven foot tall, six, seven, seven. And they tell them about what their dad done. They was cooking the soup. And he's trying to trail them, get them off the, you know, the fighting knowledge. And he went over and stuck his wooden leg in this soup and stirred this soup with his leg. And thank God they thought he was God or somebody else. <laughs> that's how, that's supposed to be a fact. That he stirred this over that wooden leg. Do you remember the man's name? No, I tried to think of it the other day. Hell, I know to his boy. Well, that I remember was that that was before the when they had the horses. They run them run them out of shoots, you know. And the first guy that ever that I ever saw have horse shoots to. Racetrack, see. And I can't think of what the devil name of lady, how they was big guys. And some tourists come through. I believe it's Sealy. I'm pretty sure it's Sealy. Some guy come by and he stopped, and these two brothers on the street, hell, he must have been close to seven feet. And they say, just how big do they grow here? <laughs> these <laughs> tourists said to them two guys. Mm -hmm. And I can't think what the devil did. But they had a whole, about a mile and a half north of Sealy. And you cross the river, try to, you cross the road, go straight on, cut on the corner in there and turn around. Mm -hmm. Now that's been years going by. And one of them was kind of a, well, you look at the Indian tribes, you know. They went to Washington, D.C. well. And so, Iron Sun had a wooden leg. Mm -hmm. uh, was he an Indian scout? Yeah, that's what I said. He um, and he got this uh, leg shot off in a buffalo wallow? No, he got it over here on this here. Oh, over in here, not yeah. a gauge. I see. Well, it's not the man I was thinking about then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the history of him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he used to be a fella. I can't think what his name is. His daddy was one. A wheel right blacksmith or something. The Fort Supply. I think he's the one that told me a lot about this guy getting his leg shot off and his little Indian girl took care of him. Mm -hmm. You're getting tired. Aren't you? No, I was. You're enjoying this. Oh. I am too. You get tired? No, I'm. I'm enjoying it. I don't know how you could with a bunch of bull like I give you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. But I. <laughs> but that's what fools everybody that stuff. Part of town was the best part of town. Mm -hmm. Then now, wait a minute. I told you I had a lot of. Right across from where, right out of the corner here, where all them cars are, was what they call Lowell Hotel. Big two story building there. And then the next place over there was the Ice House. But you were with them garrisons in the Ice House. The next place up on. Top of the hill was a little jail. That's what was on the side of the street. Yes. Oh, no, that's the, and I, if that would take in most of your town, but what it was. Mm -hmm. And speaking of saloons, 
What did you use for bait on your hooks? Oh, then was mostly mm -hmm. in a lot of where it was grasshoppers and all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, the creek was so, well, that whole creek was beautiful over here. You know, maybe be an island, but up beside this bed, water running on one side and water running on the other. And the minnows was in there so thick that we'd take a club, you know, a big long thumb. You can knock them out on these little islands a lot of times. Just by hitting them like that. Mm -hmm. Get them for bait. Mm -hmm. And if you ever eat fish out of a wolf creek, you wouldn't eat them out of any other place. What and kind of fish did you catch? Channel cat. Mm -hmm. Out of a wolf creek. Yes. Oh, I, What's know, the biggest fish you ever caught? You want to see him? I make proof, I, honest, I, I, I prove everything I ever said. That's the reason I tell you what happened in 1900, there ain't nobody alive. You've got a picture of him, huh? And you want to see the biggest sunflower you ever saw in your life? Look at that one. <laughs> that is a big one. Is that you in the picture, too? Yeah, that's when I had my dirty figure, you see how, mm -hmm. once I lost of it. You haven't told me what was the biggest fish you ever that's caught. That's it right there. Oh, I'm talking about, uh, yeah. Oh, there. But mm -hmm. I, I, that fish, I don't count salt water. I caught yeah, I salt water fish in Mobile. How there much was, did it weigh? That weighed six pounds and five ounces. A channel cap? That's a bass, woman. I'm bass. a sport myself. I don't fool with that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. And you caught it out of Wolf Creek? No, I caught that a uh, little wolf. Oh, little There's wolf. A little creek out here. Yes. Caught it out of little wolf. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. And the joy of my wife, that sunfire grade right out, right out here where the trash can is. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny? I'd show somebody my. I said, "See, I said I want to show you my sunflower." And they look at it in that sunflower. And some fishermen say, "Well, what's that you got in your hand?" They don't pay any to that sun. That's the biggest bass I've caught. No, so I, I don't know. Them old saltwater cats. It's got a total fear in hell to come out that long. I never did wear one of them. Mm -hmm. but I was fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. And, you know, yes. You know, I'm a natural born tramp. You Can were. You see a natural born tramp? Well, I'm well, looking I mean, at one, I guess, right? <laughs> you ain't getting. Well, I've sure enjoyed this. I'll tell you what I've done. I got tired of it. I want to fish for a trip, you know. Learn to walk, fish for bass. So fishing in the Gulf, you just like any place else, you go out on those chests to fish, you know, trust what work. And hell, there'd be potholes out there, which is tied and knocked dirt out, see? And that's where you caught your cat, you know, fish. Well, I thought, well, I got tired of looking at everybody. I've been going down there 15, 16 years before I had nerve enough to do it. So I think I have I did walk down the beach and fish, just like I fished the wolf there. Now this is a true, true story, nobody has to read that. And I had waders on. I'd wait out so far through the and the tide as it come in and wash out them holes. 
It's like Wolf Creek or any other horse. Mm -hmm. So I took my lures, a couple of lures with me, and brought the first, second, third cast. I laid over one of them blue holes around, up in Spanish mackerel. And I show him, I, like I said before, I make good on my word. <laughs> Well, I didn't catch where this is. This is in Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. That's all medicine, I think. Just that oh, list there. No, that's my bass. There's Spanish mackerel. What did he weigh? I didn't weigh him because the darn many of them weighed no use to weigh them. Oh, uh huh. About five and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to go. Can you tell how big it is? See it at the table? Yeah, I saw it on the table. Well, you can tell how long it is when this table is sitting right out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I. <laughs> Uh, they, they think all the fish are required. That's the reason I always have to carry them. Yeah, you, you take a picture to prove. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to go, and I sure have enjoyed this, and thank you for letting us interview you. <laughs> this has been fun, and I thank you.